Good morning, everybody. Thank you for so much for stopping by the Rural Report. I am your Rural 2IC, and uh, I, I want to make, I guess, maybe an announcement, if you will. Different sort of video than uh, what I have ever put on. Uh, I want to catch you up a little bit and, uh, and also tell you a little bit of news. And so... With everything kind of going on, uh, you know, if you've watched my channel, you know that uh, there, there's been some changes going on and, and had to do some career changes. Uh, plus, there's some of us in the prepping community that that's had some bad situations, some bad things happen, uh, personal SHTF situations and things like that. And uh, it, it kind of got me into a little bit of a mindset and with everything that you can do, you know, you have freedom of, of thought, freedom of choice, and you are going to, you know, take that and do something with it. And for me, it was one night I was just kind of sitting up a little later than normal and I popped open the computer and I had all these thoughts in my head. And the only thing that I knew what to do was I uh, just opened up the WordPad app and just started typing things out. And I ended up, uh, I guess, having it as maybe like a journal entry and maybe just kind of documenting my thoughts. And what transpired from that actually turned out to be a... Uh, fictional little kind of short intro to something. And so uh, I, I kind of saw where it was going, you know, not very far into it. And slowly over the past uh, couple of weeks or so, uh, I've been doing it over and over. And uh, right now it looks like it's going to turn into like a short story. Okay. So I guess I'm writing a book. Um, I am not a writer. Uh, I don't go out and, and say that I'm a professional author. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually any good at it. And so uh, I, I just sat out and I, I just wanted to do it. I think that it's, it's pretty decent so far, but hey, I'm a little biased. It's mine, right? Uh, but then again, I'm also my own worst critic, I suppose. Uh, there's been times where uh, I'm on a chapter and I go back a few chapters and I just take uh, you know a bunch out and I rewrite it. Uh, there's times where I don't write anything for two days and then there's times where I bust out a lot in a single sitting. And so uh, as of me making this uh, currently, I'm already done with 11 chapters. Uh, it's going to be short, each one, depending on how fast you read. Uh, it's roughly about 10 minutes per chapter. I, I wanted to make it short. Uh, I I've kind of seen, and at least in my own personal experience, uh, it, it takes somebody extremely talented in order to get you into a really long read. Now, especially now, being on social media, uh, where you have reels and shorts, you get seconds to grab somebody and hold them in order for them to watch things like this on the long form content. And so I didn't want to, especially if I'm going to ever write another one, which I don't know if I will, I guess we'll see how this one goes. Uh, but I wanted to make it short. And so this one's going to be basically a uh, fictional SHTF situation that happens to where I bounce uh, back and forth. The start of the chapter is currently, and then after a few sentences, I start telling you about uh, uh, the event. And I try to take it day by day. So the day of the journal event starts out with what's going on, and then it transitions into the same day about a year ago. and. So far, it seems to be doing pretty well. Um, the few people I have shared it with seem to uh, enjoy it. I don't know if they're just trying to protect my feelings or not. But, um, hey, I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, it's not my first day on the Internet. I know there's going to be critics. I know that there's going to be somebody that likes it, that hates it. Uh, but whatever, okay? 
I wrote it and I'm going to share it and see what happens about it. So in this video, this long drawn out intro to this is I am going to now play a narrated uh, excerpt. And so it's going to be me reading chapter one. And uh, the way that I did it is I basically just cut a bunch of little clips to kind of go along with the scene that I'm currently reading. So uh, maybe it'll help you envision or help you, you know, uh, kind of mentally be there and, and kind of see it. Uh, some of the clips don't mash up as well as I wanted to. Uh, some uh, mash up really, really well. But Hey, it is what it is, right? You uh, work with what you got. I am no software editor or video editing guy. Uh, I'm not even a professional writer, but hey, here I am, right? All right, so enough of that. Here we go. Let me know down in the comments. What do you think? Should I abandon this thing and uh, cut ties now? Uh, or should I uh, keep going? Uh, should I release it just out onto uh, social media sort of things? Or should I actually just go through and publish this and, and write a book? So I want to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comment section. And uh, without further ado, here we go. I hope you enjoy. Journal Entry, 22 October, 2025. Well, I think it's my birthday. To be honest, I have no idea. I think I'm close at least. Well, whatever the case, happy birthday to me, I guess. What do I get? What's my present out of all this? Well, it's been almost a year since the event happened. I don't really like talking about it, even thinking about it. But it's just who I am. There's so many unanswered questions. Well, the day came of the event. It was supposedly the day that we came together as a nation to either vote in new leadership or to keep the old. Well, after that, night fell, and that's when the protest started. The protest led to fighting. The fighting spilled over into chaos. And soon after, total anarchy. This is probably the best way I can describe it. It all just happened so fast, and there was so much confusion because no one really wore uniforms. You didn't know who was on what side, who you could trust, or who was going to do what. Well, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. I thought as a prepper that I had thought out all these scenarios and planned for them, Boy, was I wrong. I was at work when it all happened. I had a great plan, or at least I thought I did at the time. Rumors and whispers were starting to spread, but nobody really took anything serious as you had to do your job and get the work done for the day. Quitting time finally came as I clocked out and walked out the door. Well, that's when it all became reality. In the distance, you could hear random small arm gunfire and noises that were not common for the everyday. I knew I had to get home. Even though it has been a year, I still think about this exact day like it was yesterday because it keeps replaying in my head every single night. As I try my best to navigate home, I did my best to go into a route that maybe would work better for this scenario. After a few minutes, I realized it was just not safe. People were causing accidents on purpose and shooting randomly into vehicles. I remember finding a small pull-off 
and grabbing my get home bag as I trotted off into the tree lines. I walked inside the cover of the trees heading south towards my home. I had to move slowly, but with purpose. I needed to get home as quickly as I could, but also I didn't want to rush into something head on. I finally reached the field. This is the one problem I faced when I looked at maps trying to first create my get home plan. This stupid field was in the way. As I thought about it each and every time, it only gave me three viable options. None of them were perfect. Option one was just run for it. Just try and get across the field as quickly as possible. Option two was to wait for nightfall, get low and slow, and creep your way along this obstacle. Option three was to go on about a four to five mile out of the way trek, following the tree line around the field. As I sit here writing, I continue to think back, and I will always wonder, did I make the wrong choice? I know I needed to get home as quickly as possible to my family as they were waiting on me, and so option one just seemed like a suicide mission. Option three would just take way too long, and possibly putting me in more danger as the tree line that I would have to follow around the field turned straight towards a highway that I would be forced to walk for miles. Well, I knew I was going to have to hunker down. Option two was going to be the one for me. This would give me a little bit of food and water, as well as getting off of my feet with a short rest. I knew a fire would be way too risky, as I was not going to be here very long anyway, and so I didn't give it much thought. I took a deep breath and I sat down. I opened my get home bag, pulling out some snacks and a bottle of water. As much as I wanted to get home, my body thanked me for the calories and the liquid. I did my best to pause, look, and listen to my surroundings so I can make a better decision on the best time to continue my journey. It didn't take long, especially for this time of the year. The sun began to already set earlier and earlier. I packed up my bag and stepped out of my resting spot for the final leg of the journey home. I moved in a very tactical style, my sidearm at the ready just in case. I would crouch and run about five yards and stop, looking around, listening to my surroundings. Then when satisfied, I would go another five yards. This continued for what felt like forever, but I finally made it. I still wonder if I should have just went with option run and ran for it. After I came into view, of the house, I pulled out my radio and called out to my family. Nothing. I tried again. Again, nothing. Each time that I pressed the button, calling out for my family, all I ever got back was silence. As much as I didn't want to, I reached in my pocket for my cell phone. I placed the call, but after one ring, I just got that stupid all circuits busy message. Ah. <sighs> A worried sigh. I began to go ahead and type out a text message, but instantly, when I hit the send button, the notification of message failed. Worried and angry with myself that I have already spent so much time playing it safe, I had to expose myself to some risk and get home now. My family needs me. I walked with much more of a sense of urgency, but the eerie silence set in. There was no neighbors outside, no kids playing, no tractors working. There wasn't even a single dog barking. My pace began to pick up as I went all the way to a flat-out sprint. Coming up from the rear of my house, my heart sank when I saw that there was no car in the driveway. My sprinting suddenly stopped as I rounded the front porch and saw my front door wide open. I froze in place for just a moment because this is not part of my plan. I dropped my bag and both my hands immediately gripped my pistol as I knew I had to clear my own house. My first step through the front door and panic set in. My house has been looted. All the things that I cared for have now been tossed and what was left was either broken or of no use. I called out hello, hoping for a familiar voice, but all I kept getting back was silence. 
My worst fears began to fill my head, but I had to go room by room. I kept telling myself that there's still a chance that my wife and son are here and are safe. They're just too afraid to come out of hiding. Slowly, I made my way through the living room, not caring about anything in there because it was built for comfort, not survival. But I, I rounded into the kitchen. I saw the fridge on the ground, both doors wide open, pretty much completely empty. All the cabinets was opened, broken dishes littered the floor. I had to keep going. I stepped into the hallway, first coming to the door of my son's bedroom. I took a deep breath and nothing. Well, almost nothing. The dresser was open. The closet was askew. And right there in the middle of my son's bed was an adult-sized footprint. Somebody's definitely been here. Anger consumed me as I realized an unwelcome stranger has been in my son's bedroom. I took a deep breath. At least this room did not show what could have been much, much worse. I peeked into the bathroom and again a surprise hit, as it was much like the kitchen. I paused for a moment, wondering what in the world, what would be the purpose of taking the time to destroy a bathroom? There's nothing in there of survival. Well, whatever, the reasoning I can ponder later. I had to keep going. I got into the master bedroom. You could tell that people were here. The closet was empty. And the bed was flipped. All the dresser drawers pulled out, closed along the floor. I peeked into the closet and the gun safe that was hidden was still there. Although it showed several signs of attempted forced entry, they had no success. I pulled the key from my pocket and with a little work, I opened the damaged door. Everything was still there just as I had left it. I turned as I knew I needed to go back through the house just in case I missed any details and start trying to figure out what happened and where my family was. I made my way to the pantry and my heart instantly sank. I expected it to look exactly like the kitchen, but my final surprise for the night was it was basically empty. There was a hint of some wrappers and an empty box scattered along the floor. This looks like this might have been the reason why somebody was here. Either somebody that I knew and trusted came here knowing exactly what was here, or some lucky stranger just hit the survival jackpot. I went back to the safe, opened, and pulled out my trusted rifle. I flipped the flashlight, mounted on it, and did my best to search the property outside of the home for any signs. I thought about heading to the neighbor's but showing up in the nighttime with a rifle just seemed like a bad idea. Besides, I had hope. I knew that there was a very good chance that they were in a safer place. I can't keep putting myself into unnecessary danger this entire time if they're perfectly safe somewhere else. It's been a long, stressful day, and not only am I starting to get cold and hungry, but I'm going to need to get cleaned up take inventory, and rest up for tomorrow.